climate change is threatening the future of millions of people. But high up in the Himalayas, a man known as the Iceman is trying to do what nature no longer can and give his community a chance of survival. We travel now to India. They contain 40% of the world's fresh water. The tallest mountains on Earth, home to 55,000 glaciers, source of seven of Asia's greatest rivers, they are the Himalayas. But one of the world's most precious resources is disappearing, one drop at a time. People are very worried about a future with less water. Farmers fear they might have to leave here one day. From Chuang Norpel's India to Bhutan and the Bay of Bengal, Nepal to the Tibetan Plateau, the people of Asia face an uncertain future. The climate is changing and life as they know it, from the mountains to the sea, is falling out of balance. According to the United Nations, a staggering four billion people around the world could be affected by lack of water in the future, and half of them will be living in Asia. The Himalayas are the water towers of Asia. My name is Dao Sherpa. I'm on the top of Mount Everest. Dao was Stephen Sherpa, an expert Himalayan mountaineer, has witnessed these glaciers receding. When the water tower dries out and two billion people don't have water to drink anymore, water to irrigate their farms, water to run industry, then there's going to be serious problems. This is a wake-up call, and we still have time to do something about it. Perhaps nowhere is water more critical than in the arid, high desert mountain communities throughout the Hindu Kush in northern India, where 75-year-old Norpel has always lived. His village, Leh, sits at a soaring 3,500 meters. The windswept area is all too familiar with the unpredictable hazards that come with the Himalayan meltdown. Norpel recalls a time when weather was more predictable and the glaciers were visible. An example of the rapidly retreating glaciers is the Hardung La glacier. I remember when we could actually walk on this glacier. Lay village receives only three inches of rain per year and farmers are completely dependent on the glacial meltwater to irrigate their crops in the spring. But with the low altitude glaciers now gone, it is not until early summer before water flows from the higher altitudes, too late for the local farmers. An engineer by trade, Norpel witnessed firsthand the suffering of his community as they confronted both flash floods and drought. He was determined to help the farmers of Ley. His solution was bold and innovative, to manipulate nature by building artificial glaciers. Norpel builds large basins about the size of a football field. In late autumn, he diverts meltwater that comes from the high-altitude glaciers into the basins. As they're located on the side of the mountain that receives little sunlight, the precipitation then freezes. It turns into a giant ice cube. By late winter, Norpel's creative engineering has replaced what nature can no longer provide. There's the diversion channel where the water enters the artificial glacier. A very small amount of water comes in at a time so that it freezes instantly. The ice retaining walls are made only of dry masonry. 
When the glacier melts, the water seeps out slowly, so there is no damage to the structure. In spring, Norpel's man-made glaciers begin to thaw, releasing precious water to the farmers below. Each glacier provides enough water to irrigate 200 hectares of crops and feed about 300 families. It's now the harvest season, and Norpel pays a visit to the farmers who are reaping the bounty of a bumper crop of barley. I was extremely happy today when I saw the farmers harvesting the crops that I helped them to grow. It gives me great satisfaction that my hard work is turning out to be fruitful. <laughs> Pansok Shering is one of hundreds of farmers who benefit from Norpel's artificial glaciers. If we keep getting a constant supply of water, then we can definitely produce a better crop of barley. Fellow villager Sonam Deshan and his family are harvesting their best potato crop in years because of Norpel's water. Without water, he says, their whole future would be in jeopardy. We are farmers, and the crops we grow are the only source of livelihood for us and our families. Without this, it will be very difficult for us to survive and for the future of our children. There are not many other jobs around here. Norpal has become so famous in his native land that he is now affectionately known as the Iceman. Each of his artificial glaciers costs only 7,000 US dollars, and more than a dozen have been built. Costs are kept low because they use only locally found materials. Villagers like Rigzin Chostol help build them. I'm glad to be helping make the glacier because water is very precious to farmers like us. Now we get water all year round and can grow more crops. I want the villagers to be capable of creating their glaciers on their own so they can be more independent. If they need repairing or a new one needs to be built, they can do it without me. When Nopal gazes across the valley where he has lived for three quarters of a century, he is deeply grateful that he has made a difference in the lives of his fellow villagers. I believe that if we start building artificial glaciers now on a mass scale, we can really lessen people's worries about the future. I feel very happy to help the farmers, you know. Because of the ingenuity and dedication of the Iceman, the people of Northwest India are able to see a future where water still flows from the mountains, a future of bountiful crops grown on family farms. <laughs>